all right everybody welcome back to another arena football nation video i hope you are all doing well and in this video we're going to get back into the national arena league coverage we missed a good part of the second half of the season uh sorry for the wait on videos but we're back at it uh we're doing a quick coverage of the games that happened we missed the uh championship game and then we have some expansion that happened after the season concluded which was pretty exciting and uh awesome additions to the league i believe so let's get right into it all right so last we left off it looks like was may 11th the beef beating the bandits in a very decisive victory 33 to 6 but uh the following that was may 17th you had the spartans and horsemen playing I think that's where we left off. I won't stay too long on it, but just to quickly cover the second half of the season we missed, we'll look over those games. So you had the Spartans beating the Horsemen 55 to 19. Pretty, pretty big margin of victory there. Uh, Horsemen kind of fell off there a little bit, and uh, I, I was really high on the Spartans. I thought they, I thought they were going to end up being one of those dark horses going into the playoffs. Uh, possibly upsetting some teams. So uh, Fred Shaw was doing a great job with that team over there. After that, you had the May 18th game against the Beef and the Bandits. And this was a big game. You had the rematch. Last game, the Beef absolutely handled the Bandits, surprisingly. Uh, so would the Bandits bounce back with it being at their home turf? And it was actually a much closer game. It ended up being 34-32 to at the Tyson Event Center. So a uh, much better, closer game. I expected no less, especially after the beatings Sioux City took. I knew they had uh, their pride was hurt, obviously. So, great bounce back game there, but the beef still come out on top. After that, May 25th, we had the Cobras and the Spartans. And the Cobras handled the Spartans 53-39 to in Greensboro. Pretty good game there. So, uh, still uh, still hot on the Spartans. I, I thought they had a chance to, to really make some upsets happen. Uh, but you got to give props to the Cobras. Way to defend home turf and handle them. Next up, you had the Bandits going to Idaho and facing the Horsemen. And Sioux City took care of the Horsemen, 56-34. So, uh, Idaho was the other, another team that just fell off there at the end of the season. Uh, they, you know, I think they'll be fine next year when they uh, just you know regroup. Re and uh, now they've had a season of the National Rally League under the belts. I, I assume we'll see some good roster turnover and that they'll come back next year. But uh, once again, losing to Sioux City in this game. Then on June 1st, you had a doubleheader. And that was the Cobras versus the Sioux City Bandits. And Sioux City actually annihilated the Cobras 62 to 35. That was a very surprising big victory for the Bandits. I, I just take, I don't know. I just think the travel maybe is a really big factor in why some of these games are much bigger scores than we thought they would be or, or, or not really up. I won't go as far as saying it's massive blowouts, but that's a big differential in score. So, uh, pr pretty crazy. I mean, uh, heart and cold type of deal. Then on June 1st, also, you had the beef going to the Spartans, and they took care of the Spartans 54-34. I remember in an earlier video, I made a prediction saying that the Spartans were going to upset the beef or potentially upset them, and I guess the beef heard me, and they said, no, sir, not today, and they handled the Spartans there. 54-34, like I said. Then to close out the season, you had three games, two on June 8th, one on June 15th. Oh, that last one was a championship game, it ended up being. But either way, the Cobras traveled to the Beef, and the Beef just handled business. You know, just, just staying undefeated at home in the regular season. Taking on probably one of the bigger challenges, the Carolina Cobras, 54-31. to 31. Uh, So pretty impressive by the Beef. Nobody was able to knock them off in the regular season. And, uh, yeah, they, they just showed why they're one of the perennial powerhouses in the arena and indoor football. Then to close out the season, you had the two bottom-tier teams in the table, the Idaho Horsemen and the Colorado Spartans playing each other. And the Spartans, th this was this was a, man, this was a mess of a video to watch, the stream. I mean, it's no surprise. And I'm sure everybody knows by now, if you watch the Spartan stream, that the uh, commentary is very colorful. They... <laughs> And this was definitely a game that was just an absolute mess to watch. But um, 
Who wanted it more? Who wanted to end their season on a win? Essentially is what this came down to. Who's going to build off this game into next season? So uh, that, that should be your inspiration. You're, you're fired to want to win this game. You know, a little bit of pride. But it ended up being a very low scoring game. And the Spartans came on top 36 to 26, defeating the Horsemen. So way to end the season there. Uh, like I said, both these teams, I, I expect them to be much better next season. Now they have a you know season under the belt of the NAL and what's expected of them to be uh, competitive in this league. And there was a few you know bright, shining moments for both teams throughout the season. So, uh, yeah, not a bad game at the end of the day. It was kind of sloppy, but, you know, these two teams will be returning next year. So I hope to see better improvement from them in that. So uh, one of the big things that we they had they at the internet, I'm excuse me, one of the big things the National Arena League decided to do was to just have the top two C teams play each other in the championship, and not the four team playoff. And I think I'm pretty sure this just came down to uh, money, uh, you know, the travel costs. You know, want to just get the season over with, have a complete 2024 season. Uh, there, you know, there's many things that it could have been, but I think it came down to that really. Uh, the top two teams, obviously, deservedly, would be, you know, nobody's going to argue with that. And if you just go by the table, that was the Beef and the Bandits. So, uh, Beef, the higher seed, hosted the, you know, uh, National Arena League Championship. Sioux City, who just happens to be their perennial rivals, were the next team up. And it was a very good game. Uh, final score, Beef ended up winning just by the skin of their teeth. And hoisting another championship by defeating the Bandits 47 to 46. You know, very good game, really exciting. What a great way to cap off the 2024 National Arena League season. And uh, hope you stay undefeated and run through another season, doing a great job. And like I said, just solidifying why they're one of the more perennial powerhouse teams in all of national when it comes to arena and indoor football. Uh, Bandits did a great job. I, I thought they were going to have an upset there. Man, what what a big upset that would have been to be not only winning the national championship for the uh, NAL in Omaha, but you know ending that winning streak for Omaha and winning in Omaha. So, uh, man, what a crazy story that would have been. But either way, that is how the season ended. You just had the top two teams on the table playing for the championship. Beef ended up coming on top. And uh, yeah, there you go. There's another season under the belts for everybody for the National Arena League. While it wasn't a perfectly run year and it did have its issues, it did complete and you do have a champion. And at the end of the day, I think it was still a successful year, all things included. Uh, yeah, we just look at the table real quick in case anybody wanted to see that. The final standings. You had Beef come out 8 0, Sioux City 5 3, Cobras 5 4, Spartans 4 5, and the Horsemen 1 7. Oklahoma Flying Aces midway through the season or a little bit midway, they ended up folding. They end up with a 0 4 record. Yeah, so what, what do I think about the season overall? Really quickly, I think that it was. Obviously not a perfect season. You had its issues, but what what arena or indoor football league doesn't at this point? I mean, making it through a full season and only having one team fold, given all the issues, is uh, is successful in my book. I mean, I've watched arena and indoor football for so long that I've seen so many teams and leagues come and go, and it's just like a flip of a dime. You know, it's it it's very like it's like <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It can happen just like that, right? Water running through your hands. It's it's nothing's a perfect given. So, really uh, happy at the end of the day with how this all went. This really could have went south really fast for this league, uh, especially with the turnover we had and not only leadership roles, but membership in the teams. And uh, this thing could have folded really quickly. But. I think, like I said before, I think uh, the new ownerships that are in between the Bandits, Beef, you got some, good, in my eyes, good uh, management and some solid coaches with Idaho and Colorado. And uh, as like we'll get into it in a little bit, we do have some expansion teams that I think will be very key 
components and the National Arena League being successful in the future. We'll talk that in a little bit. But I think it, the NAL did have a, a solid 24 season. The way I look at it this season is this was a transition year. You had a ending of the old guard for the NAL and leadership roles and teams. And you're transitioning to a new, you know, more stable in my eyes, a more like-minded group. And these are just growing pains that you're going to have to have to make that happen. So this season, obviously, you're bringing in the West Coast or close enough the West Coast with Idaho, the Midwest with Omaha and Sioux City, uh, Colorado as well. So not only is that geographical change in the way things are, but also ideological and uh, just business wise. So great season. Really had a lot of fun watching it, honestly. Uh, I love, I think NAL is one of my favorite things to watch just because the uh, talent level is good. It is very good football. And you have some guys who are hungry trying to make it to a higher level. So they're looking to prove themselves. And you got some really great brands. They're, they're, they're fun. They're, they're fun brands. They're good to watch. And they do a lot of, a lot of things right. So that is how the 2024 season ended. A lot of fun. Really happy with it at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, man, at the end of the day, it's free football. You're getting streamed on YouTube. What more can you ask for, right? But let's move on. That was the 2024 season. And the next big story coming out of this was expansion. We had a lot of awesome expansion this off season and usually it doesn't come this fast but man it uh nal made a big splash right out the gate when it comes to expansion usually there's a good amount of expansion and off seasons for these leagues and i think possibly the biggest brands that were possibly available depending on their situation and the league they're in were just snatched up by the nal there's probably about two to two to three, maybe four more out there that could, but we don't know their situation yet. None's been announced, none's been leaked, so we don't know about them as them yet. But first off, you had the Willing Miners. You know, we've already spoke on them in this channel. We have sung praises for them. I think they're a fantastic club, doing a lot of great things. Uh, man, the arena is great. They just come off, you know, they, their uh, their league winning a championship. And obviously moving up to the NAL route right the gates. Really excited for them. The Willing Miners move up to the NAL. Looking to prove themselves against the big boys. And uh, pl playing some better competition. So I'm really excited for the Willing Miners and Coach Rez. And their ownership group. I think they're going to do fantastic. They got a really solid base. And I think the even the fan base is going to you know just explode I think. I I'm hoping they will. You're in a more national league. It's bigger. And, man, your team just came off a championship. You know, how much more excited can you be? So hopefully they pack that house and we have some really exciting games. And the Miners make a very big Im Im impact on the NAL from the get-go. Then, the other really big expansion. You had the AIF essentially fold. Uh, or just, just fall apart. Not in like a negative sense. More like a, okay, we see the writing on the wall. Let's do what's best for all of us type of deal. And it was the Corpus Christi Tritons, the Columbus Lions, and the Harrisburg Stampede all leave the AIF and come on over to the NAL. Pretty exciting stuff. I mean, this is like a dream come true essentially for me because I really think the Columbus Lions should be in the NAL regardless. I didn't like them playing in the lower leagues they were in. It wasn't fun to watch. Uh, you're blowing these teams out by an absorbently large amount of run, of uh, touchdowns, and it's just it was not fun to watch. I, I couldn't imagine the fans really being too excited or happy about it. I, that's just me. That's my personal opinion. I know if I was a fan, I'd be like, oh, we're just blowing somebody. I mean, I, they had to have been taking a hurt on the uh, attendance or something. I, I, just, I don't know. I mean, that's just me. I, I apologize if I'm offending anybody about that, but <laughs> how can it be fun to be just blowing people out every game? But yeah, Columbus Lions back in the NL. 
And man, I am so glad they are because there's going to be some fantastic games in 25 with this expansion of these three, four teams counting wheeling. Man, can you imagine a beef Lions game or a Miners Lions game or Cobras Miners or beef, you know, going against the uh, Tritons? Man, there's a lot of great matchups. Almost every team in this league now is a very solid franchise with like-minded individuals and ownership groups who really want to see this thing succeed. They want to survive. They want to continue to do good. So really excited for all this. Uh, the Corpus Christi, they really surprised me. Uh, usually the history in Corpus Christi, the arena and indoor football has not been very stable or good. But man, everything they've done this season has been fantastic. You know, uniforms are great. I think they did a great job with the arena. Fans did show up. Wasn't as good as I, I know they would hope they would have, but I still think that there is a definitely a, a base there to build off of, have a solid future. And just like with Wheeling, I think them coming to NAL, having a bigger national footprint, having those type of things that they NAL provides to help them grow and be better. And uh, I thought they were a solid franchise, you know, expansion wise for the AIF in their first year. And uh, yeah, really excited for them. That's another team that I can't wait to see what they do in the future. Then you had the Harrisburg Stampede. That was another perennial you know, team in indoor and arena football. They came back, they they're, uh, had, a, had a, you know, a decent season. Uh, everything didn't look too bad. I mean, it was just a rough year overall for the IF, much worse than the NAL was. But the Stampede still did pretty good. I liked most of the stuff they were doing. They, they, I mean, the arena they played in wasn't bad. And uh, the production wasn't even terrible either, honestly. It, it was watchable, so that's better than some teams can say. But really excited to see where they go. They seem to have a really solid ownership group that, that's excited to be in the NAL, and they want to do. They want to be in Harrisburg. They want the Stampede to do, do good. They want to you know, have a great brand for the fans to come watch. So really excited for Harrisburg. Uh, man, the sky's the limit, obviously, there. And they're going to have a solid rivalry with Wheeling Miners. You know, geographically. That's the other thing. There's a lot of really good rivalries that can come out of this. And uh, that that's, that's really exciting in itself. So, yeah. The, the great thing is also, and uh, if you haven't yet, go watch the Inside the Walls uh, podcast with James Bernier. Then uh, they have a podcast, literally, you know, YouTube channel, where they talk about the, the league, the NAL. And in it, you can have you'll have the you know owners come in and they'll talk. You have the league commissioner comes in and talks. So there's a lot of stuff, really awesome information you can learn just by watching those videos and uh, the podcast. And man, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. And I don't and I don't think the NAL is done with expansion. That's the one of the more really exciting things that we are waiting on. So you just recently had the league owners meeting. And uh, there was some pretty exciting stuff coming out of that. And I think the 2025 season is going to be fantastic. One, one of the reasons why I think they may not be done is there's a good amount of teams that are still being, uh, are still going through the process of being checked out if they can return or they can come over. I know there might have been some franchises from the AIF that we're trying to transition along with. Uh, the Tritons, Stampede, and the Lions. So who knows? Maybe one of them can make it over. Uh, obviously, they're going to be vetted and checked to see if they can follow this business model the NAL has. You know, if they'll be productive and positive members. And then who knows? There might be even more teams out there that we don't know about that uh, they are just brand new. So pretty exciting. I think we might still get some more expansion before it's all said and done and uh, here's, here's a little bit of a rumor uh, maybe you've you've already seen or heard it but there's a team in Shreveport Louisiana that might be coming uh, I know on Facebook they almost got like a thousand likes and almost 2,000 followers they're they're kind of blowing up a little bit there but the Shreveport Rougerou I think is how you pronounce it uh, correct me if I'm wrong but yeah, there was a uh, there was a picture. I'll post it real quick. There was a picture of a helmet at the league meetings that looked nothing like any of the teams that are already currently in the league. 
So everybody was kind of just trying to guess what that was. And you really couldn't get a good idea of what it was, really. Uh, it looked like maybe a ghost. It was an all-black helmet with like silver gray, a logo, and it, uh, like a, a ghost or a ghoul or something like that. that. That's the best guess I had. Something like that. But it turns out it might have been this Louisiana team that it uh, looks like a werewolf. This is how those some of the logos that we have seen here on the screen. But pretty interested to see if this is the team that that was. And if they're coming in AL. They obviously haven't said what league they're coming in. But they are posting a lot on social media. So it would be pretty interesting to see if this is one of the teams that the NAL would be taking in. It does say... They will be having a press conference. Uh, that will be August 15th. So right around the corner are a yeah, press release. So we'll know then who ho hopefully we'll know then they'll release who they're playing for and uh, some more details about the team. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, Louisiana, uh, obviously, I feel like that's a solid state to have it in uh, an arena or indoor football team. I know a lot of passionate fans are in that state. You obviously have LSU and Saint or the the Saints, so that'd be really awesome. I miss the New Orleans Voodoo. I thought they had a very solid brand and color scheme, and the Graveyard was the name of their field and arena. So pretty uh, excited to have Louisiana football back. Hopefully, they can get the issues that hurt teams. I think it was. Uh, player insurance compensation i don't know exactly what it was but there they do have some issues there why teams haven't been able to be able to play out of that state but maybe we have a, a solution now with this team uh so not not an absolute lock but uh looking pretty close like it might be the shreveport rougerou if i'm pronouncing that right um yeah so right now we're at nine if they're in that's ten I could see them going to 12 even. You know, there's still a bunch of teams out there that could come on over. I know, like I said, if you watch those podcasts or those videos, you'll see where they talked about they don't have a set number of expansion. So, uh, within reason, they, they could go to 12 or more. So, pretty exciting stuff for the NAL. Congratulations to the Omaha Beef on staying, remaining undefeated and winning the National Arena League Championship in 2024. I'll make more videos as we get closer. If there are anything, any more updates. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much what we're looking at for the NAL. Pretty exciting stuff. I, I, I'm more excited for the NAL and 25 than any other league at this point. Some of these matchups are going to be great. And it's just going to be a lot of fun for sure. But let's see if we can find the. Where is it? Let's see if I can pull up the map real quick. But yeah, there you go. There's the map. It truly is a national league team or, or national league with all the teams they have now. Uh, you got, you know, Idaho. There's a couple of teams in the Midwest. We're finally back in Texas. And you got a bunch of teams up and down the East Coast. So really exciting stuff with the potential for more teams on the way really excited for the 2025 season for the nal and uh, like i said as more information comes available or updates i'll be making videos about it all right everybody thank you for checking out the video i really appreciate it uh if you like this kind of content please like and subscribe we'll be covering all the leagues nal ifl afl starting now so it should be some great content down the pipeline and i really appreciate you checking us out all right, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.